Yeah, yeah, one minute. Okay. Yeah, one minute, one minute. Sorry. Somewhere I lost the presentation. One moment. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Nice. Clear to clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, right. Thank you. You can tell me whenever we should start so that I can start accordingly. We have, I think. Two three minutes more. Yes, sir. Just two minutes. Okay. I just want to understand what is the background of the audience. All are belong to the faculty faculty, sir. Teaching faculty, most of them are. Very few are from industry. Okay, so most of them fac faculty and students from electrical, mechanical. Maximum are electrical engineering, sir. Okay, okay. Because this is actually uh, the whole topic is multidisciplinary, so. Electrical, electronics, mechanical, instrumentation. We are looking at it, 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 people from all these can you know find it interesting. Some research scholars also this, sir. Okay, okay, very good. There is a lot of research being done in this topic in India. I have been personally working on this topic from '85. So, mm -hmm. uh, if IIT Hyderabad, for example. No. We, we work very closely with the mechanical engineering department there. Mm -hmm. They are our very good customers. IIT, IIT Kharagpur, IIT NIT Patna, uh, Indian Institute of Science. Most of these, most of these colleges mm -hmm. in the power industry. In fact, uh, BHL R and D, Vikas Nagar, oh. and BHL R C Puram are both. Uh, organizations in the electrical sector which you will be familiar with who are working on this field of noise and vibration mm -hmm. also with NTPC C CPRI IDEMI so th these, are, these are all electrical organizations with whom we have been working extensively so the major companies are covering sir yeah so these are all companies with which who are using the same topic and it is extremely extremely important as you can see going through the slides especially on the vibration component in the power plant no no power plant can run without vibration measurements yes Afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Then shall we start, sir? No, oh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, you can start. No problem. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Welcome to the BIT Adderbury College of Engineering for Women. I'm very much thankful to you for spending your valuable time to share your industry exposure to the all the participants from the different colleges and uh, research scholars. So we welcome you to the this day three session. And uh, now I'm handing over to the Amrita Madam to brief you about, uh, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, all. Um, Mr. Dashekar Uchil is a graduate in electronics and communication engineering from Karnataka Regional Engineering College, Suratpel, presently NIT Suratpel, and also holds postgraduate diploma in advanced management. Sir has almost 35 years of rich experience in different fields of engineering, 
like ac drives and dc drives used in various motor control applications ac servo drives thyristor and controllers for furnace heater control thermal imagers for control mon condition monitoring and instrumentation and He has more than 20 years of experience in the field of noise and vibration measurement. He is working with high-profile companies like Nantuck Systems, Aerotherm, Dell India Limited, Massibus Instruments, and ARC Advisory Group. At present, sir is a DGM Technical in Josh Engineering Company Limited. Sir has got 26 years of experience with International Society of Automation and is a membership chair of ISA for the past two years. So has been supporting. Uh, so has been supporting a number of colleges, both professionally and as student chair. I will say. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us today. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Amrita, for your very nice introduction. Uh, as I said, I am electronics engineer by degree. I have been working in instrumentation uh, on noise, vibration, and process control for the last thirty-five years. So this this particular presentation. which i am doing on behalf of the international society of automation is aimed at noise and vibrations and its importance for the electrical engineers it is of course multidisciplinary uh, and the in fact we have a section in hyderabad also we work extensively with the industry and with the academia on uh standards certification education and training publishing conferences everything so as you can see from an engineering view point uh as a student you start with basic technical and basic education then you understand your industry specific training and you also become part of the education committee and this is where your career really goes because when you understand industry training and then you are in connect with the industry trends as a member of the world's largest association on automation it really helps both faculty and students so it is a non profit organization since 1945 in fact the photo that you see here is dick morley who is considered the inventor of the plcs there are different divisions and among the divisions specific of interest to you would be the power division so this is the vision of creating a better world through automation we believe in excellence integrity diversity collaboration and professionalism uh, from a membership view point all the members worldwide are individual members and therefore there is no bias there is no company membership uh, what are the benefits so isa bangalore is among the most active sections we have more than 200 members in india we uh, allow you to keep abreast of latest industry standards webinars technical library maxim uh, magazines leadership opportunities let us now look at we have standards for example uh, the latest standards on uh, 68243 on cyber security is one of the most important standards today in automation so this is something that we can help the college on that yesterday you had the talk on ic61850 which is on communication in the power industry okay now we go on to the talk uh what is sound we hear sound in any point whether we heard a bird singing or rain or a telephone and you hear noise the difference is what is unwanted sound is what we call noise otherwise for everyone what we are speaking today is the sound whether we are talking of a car noise or a wheel noise everything is sound same way a vibration and we go back to uh, all of all of you from the school days would have seen the tuning fork we hit it and we measure the vibration levels and the peak is the resonance in an, in a college that you have only a single frequency but in an industry you don't get anything where you get a single frequency so you get a large number of frequencies when you look at a motor or a power chain gearbox and all those frequency analysis gives you uh, the information like what an ecg gives you for a doctor why do we measure any parameter as an engineer you cannot say something is good something is high or something is low there 
has to be a quantification so when we measure sound we say objectively is the sound level of one bike more than the other is the noise level in your college too much because of traffic noise can we use it for diagnostics to find out where the source of the noise is this is something that i will cover continuously what we use with sound intensity source location so this is the reason why we measure sound again why do we measure vibrations a there is a limit to a vibration as all mechanical engineers would know that for a particular uh, motor or a pump there is a vibration level so it should not exceed that level excitation of resonances this is what happens in a power plant when you do a run up or run down of a motor or generator you don't want it to go to resonance when we when you want to do dampen or isolate vibration we will have to measure it and say okay this is the frequency this is the amplitude and then you put your dampers or isolators condition monitoring which is a lot on in the power plant we point condition monitoring is the most important aspect for why vibration is used i will cover quite a lot in my coming slides and then also model analysis for mechanical engineers or even electrical engineers you would have studied software like nastran or ansys or abacus these are virtual tools when we do with an impact hammer like what you see in the picture then you actually do vibration measurements on a structure uh, am i clear or any questions you want to take anyone you can take it as it is also again how do we measure sound so case of the sound your primary sensor is a microphone with an extremely thin diaphragm as you can see it's a 5 micron metal foil diaphragm and with this microphones depending on the size of the microphones you can measure noise as low as minus 20 decibels to as high a noise as 200 decibels depending on the microphone design so it has a microphone and a pre amplifier because the microphone has a high output impedance so to connect to your data equipment system you have an impedance matching system and amplification this for any instrumentation engineer is your measurement chain so you have a transducer you have a pre amplifier the pre amplifier serves many purposes as we said it does a impedance matching it converts say for example the microphone output of pico coulombs to voltage it also gives a power supply it also amplifies the signal you have a filtering circuit normally an anti aliasing circuit uh, to cut off the frequencies and then we do the uh, detection and the averaging so you use algorithms like linear averaging or exponential averaging then it comes to a display you also then uh, go through the software where you use extensively for fft for example fast fourier transforms which is one of the most common things in analysis no no, no uh, this just gives you an idea of noise levels as you know it's very difficult to quantify noise when you measure it in micropascals as you can see from the left hand side uh, you are talking of noise levels from 20 micropascals to uh, 100000 million micropascals so Uh, when you explain to a person that it is 1000 micropascals or 100 micropascals it is not possible so we converted this into a decibel scale so where we go as uh, a typical living room is about 30 40 decibels a typical office with all the office furniture and working is 60 decibels a drilling workshop is about 60 70 decibels again a typical power plant is around 80 decibels uh, fire crackers or a rocket take off goes to about 150 decibels gunshot noise is around 180 decibels we now look at vibration transducers the oldest of these is the mechanical lever it was a just a lever which picked up the vibration from the moving wheel it is still found in a few power plants but it's extremely old you have the eddy current proximity pickups which are still extensively used in the power plants essentially for relative motion and shaft eccentricity Uh, anyone who has come across the term orbit plots will note that uh, the orbit plots are measured with a proximity probe you then have velocity pickups which is now 1 kilohertz normally but now the extension is range and now the most commonly used sensor in the industry is the piezoelectric accelerometer 
the piezoelectric accelerometer works on the principle that there is a piezoelectric crystal on a seismic mass and when it is vibrated you get a pico coulomb output that pico coulomb output is then converted to voltage either through preamplifiers in the accelerometer where, where then the accelerometer is referred to as an iep or icp accelerometer or ccld or a preamplifier externally it then goes to the data acquisition system where it is measured and analyzed uh, hello uh, this chart actually illustrates to you why the piezoelectric frequency range and its large dynamic range so that's the reason for it being preferred uh, vibration in daily life again vibration levels go from seismic vibration which is a few microns to a at a, an explosion of a bomb which could be about 100000 meters per second again to quantify this uh, we use the db scale which then is, becomes much easier to visualize now we just have a look at instruments that we are used so for example on the left hand side these are all what we call as portable sound level meters these are all for noise measurements so you have the uh, first three which are standard sound level meters uh, the last one is uh, what you would see with two microphones and this is used for intensity measurements or source location also today in transformer noise uh, i will cover it later on but the transformer noise today Uh, is also measured by intensity because then it is not affected by background noise an example of the post processing plots is given on the right hand side where detailed analysis can be performed same way for vibration the, the you can as you can see you have the handheld analyzer where you can see all the graphs which are illustrated on the right hand side most important for the electrical engineer is a graph in the bottom of the screen as you can see this is be a typical waterfall diagram most important when you do a generator run up or a motor run up or run down in a power plant this is the sort of graph that a mechanical engineer studies to look at resonances in the system condition monitoring as i said in every industry where there is rotating machinery so oil, the oil and gas industry the power industry whether it is wind hydel or thermal and in the processing industry wherever there are rotating machines so you are talking of motors you are talking of pumps you are talking of generators in all these condition monitoring is always used where vibration is one of the many many parameters it's one of the most important parameters in fact and in all cases vibration measurements are done continuously in power plants for example now as you can see this is a typical turbine monitoring system those of you who have by chance visited any power plant would have seen this in your main control room or if you go to bhl ramchandrapuram on the test beds you will see such systems so as you can see the status the values the trends of the turbines is continuously checked in real time and synchronized even with the main dcs now with new advances these are typical plots as you can see you have run up run down you have the orbit plots all these are different plots which for the mechanical engineer and for the machine diagnostics gives a lot of information on the motor conditions you, you can see an example now of your typical rotor you can see the number of parameters that are really measured almost continuously so magnetic flux partial discharge oil analysis temperature cavitation cavitation noise air gap vibration that taco which is the speed sensor the pressure the flow outputs efficiency all the these are monitored in a typical term among the key parameters which gives you the health of the rotating object is there any questions to this stage hello hello uh, is it clear hello okay thank you yes sorry yes yes any sorry, questions yes, any very clear yes mrs sunita any question 
No, sir, you asked if it is clear. It is very yeah. clear. Okay, okay, good. No, if there is any questions, also I can take them. So it gives me a little break, also. Mm. For example, now see an example of a turbo machine train. Now this is an actual power plant picture. You can see the very large number of sensors which are put for axial speed vibration. This is all actual power plant indications, and all the mechanical engineers working in a power plant will be very familiar with such pictures. All this data comes to the main control room of the picture that I showed you, checking each part of the probe, and it could be some are shaft vibration, some are axial vibration, a speed measurement. So your everything on your complete mechanical chain is measured continuously to know the health of the object. Now you also you have the main plant, and then you have what you refer to in the power plant as balance of machinery (BOPs). So you have fans, blowers. Pumps, gearboxes, separators, mill crushers—all these again are rotating objects. Again, all of these have to be also monitored continuously by vibration to check their health. This vibration either done periodically or with the continuous monitoring systems. This is an actual example. As I was saying, this is from one of the NTPC plants. You have the generator. So at the generator inside. Uh, we have put the accelerometer, so the accelerometer continuously measures the vibration in the generator. is connected through a data equation system, the junction box, uh, to the complete alarm and trip system. So, if there is a vibration inside the generator, the entire system trips. This is an actual NTPC synchrony picture. I think. Now, this is something from the mechanical viewpoint. As you can see, how do you measure the energy? You have A shaft rotating on the bearings. This vibration is measured all sides. We then keep a sensor outside to measure the vibration. So you have the forces caused by imbalance, gear meshing. You have the structural characteristics, and you have the vibration response. Vibration, as you can see, could be measured in acceleration. It could be uh, velocity or displacement. As electrical engineer or as a design engineer, we also know that integrating In electronic circuit is much easier. So if you measure with an accelerometer, you can convert it in real time to velocity or displacement because they are all related. This is from a diagnostics viewpoint, and the picture down is exactly to a mechanical engineer what an ECG is to a doctor. It gives you information about each and every rotating part in the machine. and as you can see these are typical troubleshooting charts now depending on which frequency goes high you can you have an idea of what could be the faults so you keep tracking these and you say okay on my frequency analyzer is the rpm increasing yes then the chances are it's unbalanced if you have something at 42 to 48% it could be that there is an oil problem mainly in turbo machines then on bearings and extremely complicated but then these are calculations that you give for the bearings so your ball pass frequency outer ball pass frequency inner all of them gives it these are typical charts then again gear analysis we also use a lot of advanced techniques uh, belt looseness reciprocating all these are these are typical troubleshooting charts to enable you to have an idea when you look at a vibration okay if this vibration is increasing what should i attack you cannot attack the whole machine so your blade vibration electrically electrically induced vibrations which is very very common again there are various tools i will also send you i'm sorry the picture was not very clear when i copied it here but you actually look at the machine faults and right hand side what are the various analysis tools available on the analyzer to uh, troubleshoot these faults a typical example in a power plant today and again this is an actual case study order spectrum of a generator and down you can see the order analysis of the harmonics uh, where we are looking at the constant frequency lines and then what could this spectrum lead to with detailed analysis we have found out that the 37th order which is caused by the blade passing frequency of the fan was causing vibration in the whole place uh, as i was also saying today many of these fans motors pumps are also run by variable frequency drives vfds now the vfd 
normally pro, uh, the theory of the vft is that you change the frequency of an induction motor by the formula of 120 f by p and uh, the motor increases from zero speed to even 3000 4000 rpm even for a 1500 rpm motor now in the vft you to overcome these resonance problems we will have skip frequencies so the electrical engineer when he uses the vft ask the mechanical engineer do you have resonances in your motor or generator so then when the speed increases it just skips those frequencies so that the rotating object does not hit its mechanical resonance we then look at standards I and mean, this is the most important thing from an engineer point uh, it is very similar to what we saw in 61850 what is the standard why is there something Uh, put as a standard a very simple example today is our ethernet lan connection and i triple e 802 is a standard used worldwide so you know anyone using an i triple e computer ethernet computer can go worldwide and he says give me a lan cable and it works our mobile the sd card is interchangeable for any mobile it doesn't matter because the sd card follows an international standard why is this a standard you have a direct lowers installation costs reduces inventories you can interchange components as i said very clearly you can take an sd card from your mobile give it to another person and it works seamlessly and uh, uh, this is something that is built up by years of experience lowers the experience maintenance costs and this is built up by people who have been working for years in the industry so you have a standard organization like ieee you have then organizations like abb or siemens who are designers you have the end users who are the power plants you have the labs like cpri all of these put together and say that this look this is the standard which is going to be followed and and this is very nicely brought out yesterday even in the 61850 standard which is used on power systems how can you get an abb and a siemens system to talk together they have to be talking the same language the same protocols and that is why you have a standardization in the industry same way for noise measurements how do we do that something on the standards uh, i will very specifically go to transformer noise today there is a standard on transformer noise 60076-10 and you can have a picture down of the typical report made when you make as per the standard so you have a sound pressure level mentioned mentioned there or a sound intensity level so this could be done either by pressure or power you cannot measure power directly so the power is calculated by standards where you measure with eight microphones and convert it to sound pressure or you multiply do intensity techniques with the two microphones and then convert it to a sound power and this is a typical report made by many industries you might see a similar report even if you if you go for example to toshiba in hyderabad the report of the transformer will be made in this sort of fashion if it is measurements are done as per this iec standard the, these are standards for the instrumentation that we took care okay this is also very important from electrical engineer calibration as as you know there is a calibration hierarchy what we do in the measurements at the field is the bottom level then you have a field calibration which is uh, measured and calibrated from a uh, primary lab you have then a secondary uh, calibration system which is used by all calibration labs for example the etdc and all are calibration labs and then you have the primary calibration which is which is today maintained in npl which is the primary lab in india so again uh, another thing about power plants when you set up a power plant even before setting up a power plant there is something called an environmental impact assessment how much noise will the power plant create when it runs and in many places this report is made even before the power plant comes based on software forecasting in noise so whether it is for a power plant whether it's for a metro if eia studies are done and one of the noise reports is an acoustic assessment on how much would be the effect of noise on that uh, uh, this report then is given to the pollution control boards and statutory authorities to say that is this okay 
if the noise level is high they may say please put barriers please build some buildings please see what you can do to reduce the noise levels so that the neighborhood doesn't get upset this is mandatory for any construction industry then occupational health so for example inside a power plant where you have 80 90 decibels uh, occupational noise says that a person should not get exposed to more than uh, 80 80 decibels for 8 hours is considered as 100% so you have a noise dose meter which is clubbed uh, is just put in your pocket and the total dose taken is measured or the noise level from the plant is calculated uh material testing i just put this because today uh this is used by example in bhl kasnagar when you have a noise curtain today your generator makes a lot of noise so there is, you, there will be acoustic curtains put around the rotating object to prevent the noise from coming how do we measure the property of this acoustic curtain and that is how material testing is done it's put in an impedance tube and the absorption and transmission loss is calculated for these items these are all from the material then vibration testing which i will not check much machine vibration as i said each machine depending on its rating so you have class 1 class 2 and the rating of these machines for a generator or for a motor is designed by these standards and a general level of vibration on what is good what is satisfactory or what is unacceptable is given so when you measure a generator with vibration analyzer uh, meter also it will just look at these levels and the rating of the generator or motor and say okay is it good is it getting bad overall and then action is taken by the maintenance engineer condition monitoring as i said you have detect uh, diagnosis the problem prognosis recommendation post mortem and this is what i showed in the condition monitoring slides earlier today advanced condition monitoring systems for a power plant also use ai also use big data to see how this vibration data relates with all the other process parameters so temperature pressure all this data goes in software like osi soft and is integrated to compare how the machine health is deteriorating so for example in a hydel power plant these are some of the standards used for specifically hydel hydel power plant so thank you so this was yes so this is what is the idea of uh, as i say how we help students and academia so i am now ready to take the questions uh, I, I, this is a vast topic so it could go to you know our, any of the particular topics that i covered here are literally a two day three day training session so we could do that also to the college if you want no problem what i did was trying to cover the entire noise and vibration from a very generic viewpoint yes, sir there are few questions sir uh, yeah. which are posted in the chat box can i ask them most most come most welcome yes, because sir. questions uh, are easy aparendra has asked uh, what are the parameters for design of sensor to quantification of noise of a machine oh, 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 i'm sorry one second what is the what are the parameters for design of sensor to quantify Uh, to quantification of noise of a machine okay there, so now there are two parts in the question one is your design of your sensor so when i look at say let us say an axillometer or a vibration uh, sensor uh, is the person who asked the question available so which sensor are you talking of acoustics or vibration sorry sir no uh, when, uh, when you say design of a sensor then we go back to the sensor for example an axillometer is a vibration sensor right yes so now you are saying how do, how is the axillometer designed is one step or how is the microphone designed is the second step that yes. that 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 is a lot of for example today there is the microphone uh, is designed based on the characteristics that the microphone has to be used so what is the frequency range what is the db range what is the polarization that the microphone has to be used for based on that there are different microphones same way for axillometers uh, the piezoelectric crystal for example de depending on the temperature of operation so for example if i am using it on a cryogenic engine for the space development 
then that accelerometer with the titanium construction has to work at minus 180 degrees centigrade in fact if it has to work on a gas turbine you are talking of 400 or 500 degrees centigrade the the there is a change in the selection of the crystal there is a change in the hello hello Class now. Class, uh, yes, sir. Someone has uh, unmuted themselves and they are speaking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Please. So, as you can see now, each of these points on the application design the sensor. So that is from the sensor viewpoint. Uh, what was the second part of the question? I'm sorry, I missed it. Then the application, right? Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, another question from Doctor Yogesh Y Pundlik. Yes, Do yes. Please. How to use Uh, shall I continue with the question, sir? Yes, yes. Do we have to use different piezoelectric sensors for different equipment? Yes. Now that is what I was coming to. Uh, now you could have an accelerometer which is very light. So, for example, on a very small PCB, what is used in the uh, satellite, that PCB weight is just more than not more than four or five grams. In which case, then we use a piezoelectric accelerometer whose entire weight is only point six grams. so you select a sensor which will not affect the mechanical design of the pcb on the other hand if i am using seismic vibration so if i am measuring vibration on the ground uh, the weight doesn't matter but your vibration levels are very very high so i uh, are very very low so i would use a seismic accelerometer which could weigh as much as 200 or 300 grams but has a sensitivity of 10 volts per g so even the slightest vibration I, i would get a very large signal output that is from the uh, sensitivity view point as i said temperature if i am using in a cryogenic engine the the accelerometer has to work at minus 175 degrees if i am using on a gas turbine it is at 4 400 500 degrees so the sensor crystal changes the sensor shape changes uh, the sensor material is generally titanium Uh, but then uh, also when you are mounting it there is a lot of design on the accelerometer which is made all the, therefore there are all manufacturers of accelerometers make a range of accelerometers depending on the application that you want uh, am i clear dr pundalik or hello hello sir shall we go with the next question yes yes, yes. i hope i am clear i mean Yes, sir. Might be, sir. Sir, uh, we'll go with the next one, uh, which is being asked again by Bima Varpu Amarendra Reddy. Yes. What are the different factors for overall condition of a system, and how to quantify? Uh, for overall vibration of a system, we would normally use the ISO one zero eight one six standard, which goes on the rating of the machine and the vibration levels allowed, uh, uh, which I showed you during the slide. There. One second. I'll just get you that. this standard defines your overall vibration level as defined by the rating of the machine rating meaning the kilowatt rating yeah as you can see you have small machines medium machines and large machines and this based on the rating of these machines the vibration levels are generally fixed for an overall level so as you can see a class 1 machine you could not have a vibration level of more than 0.71 mm per second squared is is going to the uh, you know just a satisfactory level while for a large machine like a class 4 uh, large generator you could go even up to 2.8 mm per second because the machine is so large so this is an overall indication of the vibration level of the machine so these uh, you you have when the machine is installed at the factory these measurements are taken almost as a baseline to say okay does it satisfy the basic criteria uh, sir this is the question from priyadarshi mitesh yes at the time of stopping the turbine it yes. has to run for some time yes. what happens when the vibration is present at that time yeah so you one of the things that you will get in, when you when you have a turbine run up or run down is what we would do as order analysis where you can see the vibration as it changes with the speed and then you plot what is called a waterfall plot where you compare vibration uh, you can see this is an example of a waterfall plot as you can see it is in three dimensions so you have a y axis which is the vibration levels meters per second you have the frequency and you have the rpm 
so based on this you are looking at whether there is a peak coming on your generator or turbine or motor and if there is a peak coming at any of those then you look at okay why did it encounter this vibration level at this frequency is it something to do with the mechanical design is it something to do with the gearbox with the belts and this is then checked with the mechanical engineer to say okay this vibration level is high what do how do we change it yes sir sir uh, this is a question from a mobile so we don't have the name here what no is the difference between calibration and standardization a uh, calibration is to ensure that what you measure is accurate so if i'm saying that i'm measuring 1 volt how do i know that my multimeter measures 1 volt i would have to give a 1 volt known signal from a precision sound source and say that i have given one volt to my multimeter and it measures one volt and it is calibrated the standardization is uh, the standardization is what uh, is the method for calibrating of the multimeter is the standard the, the standard may say that if the my multimeter accuracies are of 1% then my calibration source should be 0.01% and this is the standard the calibration is the technique the standard is a procedure laid out by which it has to be calibrated uh, is it clear sir sir we'll go with the next question sir welcome is, uh, hello sir can you hear me sir i can hear you yes sir the next question is little clarity on primary calibration secondary calibration and the question okay. continues like this how yes. to control the noise level how to control the noise level if process generates the noise like induction furnace while heating please clarify sir okay now uh, in a in a furnace uh, what is the noise that contributes you have a fan or you have the steel melting either of these are noise levels that you would measure with a sound ammeter uh, you cannot control the process noise because it's a steel melting furnace but for the operator how do you make it less so then you could put something like an acoustic curtain to say that the operator can stay behind the curtain and he doesn't hear the noise level that's you are cutting down the noise if it is for a fan which is vibrating you could put a damper you could put put an isolator so that the noise is not transmitted to the next room this is you have absorption or isolation of the vibration or the noise to cut down the noise the second part is what we were talking on the standards right this is the typical uh, calibration hierarchy of standards the primary calibration today and as you know today with the change last year on primary units the primary unit of about 7 units today is measured by atomic accuracies uh, the next calibration level is in india at npl delhi the national physical laboratory they are, they have the primary source of calibration of everything the secondary calibration is what would be in a lab like the etdc in hyderabad the, uh, the field calibration is what we would do when you do field measurements so this is the hierarchy so each of these the standard says that each measure each accuracy level should be at least 1/10 the previous accuracies so for example if i'm measuring field level and i measure 10 mm per second is my accuracies the the uh, above that should be the my accuracy should be 0.1 and then 0.01 or 0.001 for example vibration measurements at npl are not done with an accelerometer they are done with the laser which is the primary level but you don't use the laser every time so when you take your transducer to npl they will calibrate it with the secondary source or primary source yes sir sir uh, there is another question actually yes uh, so this is by uh, again bhimavarpu amarendra reddy how yes. do how to address emi problem of power electronic system uh, well emi rfi is not something that i have i cover in this are, that's a separate topic by itself i i am not i am not an emi rfi specialist there is yeah, there are separate standards like the crias pr standards for emi rfi so i am sorry but i'll have to pass this question because that is not my specialization 
yes and the hello this level of electrical machines yes i'm sorry sir can you repeat it what is the is standard for defining decibel level of electrical machines uh, well, uh, depending on the machines there are standards published by uh, I, I, isi or iec or iso so uh, it's difficult to say what machine each machine has a different vibration level and that in some cases is defined by the standards can someone please switch on the micro switch off the microphone so these are the standards which define the method of, and you have the label for, for example today in uh, earth moving equipment or in white goods hello yes sir we can hear you sir yeah so you can see there is a label put on the machine it is just like today in electrical motor you have an efficiency class right you you have a, you have motors which are considered as a best efficiency as classified with the bureau of energy efficiency in the same way the noise level also is fixed for each item and a label has to be put and this is an actual label today put on an earth moving machine and you can see this is the iso standard how it was measured the sound power was 67 db the weighted average was 102 db this is part of the level and for each machine there's a different standard so it's difficult to say unless you tell me which machine and normally the international or is standards which are copied from iis iec or iso will tell you the level of noise yes sir we'll go with the next question sir nero mehta yes uh, any relationship between rssi which is received signal indication and cm which means condition monitoring so they are asking the relationship between rssi and cm i i am not i am i'm sorry i don't understand what is it could you, if the speaker is there could he clarify what you mean uh, sir uh, the question which is being asked is uh, any relations between received signal indication and condition condition monitoring yeah so the condition monitoring as a, as you can see here this is your received signal the graph down is your received signal on your analyzer at different points in the power train now each of these if you go to the chart next that i showed you tell you where the vibration is coming from and which and depending on which frequency is increasing you know what is the problem so it could be a gearbox problem it could be a belt problem it could, it could be a machine kept each uh, next to each other so ground based vibration or electrically induced vibrations so that you look at this you look at the peaks and then you know you look at the troubleshooting charts and you it will tell you what could be the possible fault i am not saying that the chart is a bible but it gives you a fair amount of indication that what could be the trouble this is your received signal sir we will go with the next question sir yes please uh, which was asked by nero mehta yes uh no it was asked by das yes. uh, how how do we decide the reference stationary point for installation of vibration motors uh how well, do we decide the reference stationary point for installation of vibration motors so when you when you look at a motor the uh, installation it is done in conjunction with the mechanical engineers and the mechanical engineer can tell you which are the parts of the machine where vibration levels could come and then you look at this chart or you look at the hydro turbine graph that i gave you earlier and you 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 will look at this simple thing you can see that this is a shaft in a rotating machine right and then you put one accelerometer on top and you say okay the forces coming from within the machine are picked up by the sensor and you see the graph down now where uh, the graph down gives you an indication of all the forces which are coming inside the machine and giving for vibration levels you normally keep it at a place where the measurement for example is radial it is not affected by moving conditions it is very rigid in terms of fixing of the accelerometer so that it gives you a clear picture am i clear 
yes sir sir we'll continue with the session sir uh, and at the end we'll take the question and answer session yeah i have basically finished because i went through most of the slides uh, oh. i'm sorry i'm sorry if i did it a bit fast but since there were no questions in the middle i you know went through all the slides in a continuous thing but we can go back to any of the topics on the noise and vibration and i could show you particular slides or show you any other slides and tell you where is the importance of this from a electrical okay, we decide the distance of microphone from the consider considered source well uh, this is again defined by the standard so normally the microphone in what is called a free field condition should be 1 meter away from the noise source if a measurement is taken outside or in a room if there is no obstacles nearby and nothing is within 1 meter of the sound level meter that is the measure how the method is considered this is the this is the standard the microphone is kept 1 meter away from your motor and the noise level is measured sir the question is yes hello yes please hello hello sir yes yes you... what are all the consultants in the area of vibration management uh, who are the people who are the consultants in vibration measurement now again depending on the for example today in power plants ltpc is the biggest player in the power plant industry and they have a separate division which decides on the vibration measurements you also have the bhl itself which has its r&d which will define standards for the machines that they make you have a primary lab like cpri which also helps in vibration testing of the motors all these company every manufacturing company uh, whether it is abb or crompton greaves or bhl has to do vibration measurements on their motors on their fans on their generators as per a standard this is almost like a mandatory parameter as much as you measure voltage or electricity in a motor or insulation so all all manufacturers all testing labs many of the research institutions do a lot out of work on this as i said iit hyderabad for example near you the mechanical engineering department does a lot of work on noise and vibration measurements in fact it is one of the senior scientists is in fact from ge research so they do a lot of measurements on noise and vibration of all rotating objects sir we'll go with the next question Yes, please. Which is asked by Ravi Chandra. Yes. Which one has accurate output, either contact type or contact less type, for vibration analysis meter? Uh, normally, we would prefer a contact type. The contact less type are uh, one of them is the proximity probes, but then the proximity probes frequency response is much much lesser. So you would normally use the accelerometer. The accelerometers are very very high accuracies and are much better than any other probes for vibration measurements. you have capacitive sensors you have proximity probes but they do not have the type of dynamic range that an accelerometer provides but uh, again it is a question of application you cannot measure shaft vibration with an accelerometer the shaft displacement eccentricity you cannot measure with an accelerometer you would use a proximity probe so you would have to compromise with the accuracies of that to say that that application the accelerometer cannot do so i would use a proximity probe both uh, the sensors are defined both on their dynamic range and their application so accuracies are very difficult to quantify in that sense i think the sharing went out Hello sir can you hear me Yes yes i can hear you definitely no problem vibration is not vibration in normal noise is high what will be the conclusion it, it, it is not one time but if the vibration of a motor is higher than the standards then you should look at the design whether you have a 
whether the measurement was done correctly when it was sent from the factory does it meet the iso 10816 second when it was installed for example is the installation done correctly because for example if you bring a motor and don't uh, or a compressor and don't uh, install it as per the manufacturer's uh, recommendations then it could al almost vibrate even when it is automatically running so in which case then you have to go back and say okay this is an installation problem can i go with the next question sir yes please yes please no problem yes so the question is uh, what are the standards for anti vibration pads or system uh, there is a separate uh, there is a spe specific standards for each application so when you use uh, isolator or a damper there are standards governing this and uh, i if a specific requirement is there you can send me a mail i can try and get you for uh, the standards for this again it varies from machine to machine what could be used as a damper for say an astronomy telescope would be totally different from what i would use in a power plant and this question is from pooja raj yes okay. uh, no sir uh, the question is uh, from muttu kumaran what is the frequency of checking of the vibration levels in rotating machines uh, we could typically when you look at it you could start with say two weeks or three weeks uh, in case of you are using a portable system in case of vibration monitoring on a permanent system it is 24 by 7 it may be sampled every one minute or so if the vibration levels are increasing then you decrease the sampling time and you make it more closer so as i said in a portable system i could start by one week if i see vibration levels are increasing then i take it every two days every day it it, it it is like in a human being if i have if i have slight temperature then even i can measure the temperature twice a day but if it is life threatening then i am on a continuous system which checks all my vital parameters 24 bar 7 and gives an alarm hello this question is from pandurang shimpi yes what is is standard for decibel level measurement of electrical motor and compressor many manufacturers specify as per neme standard is it acceptable all standard organizations standards are acceptable nema is the national electrical manufacturers association of usa so if the nema specifies a particular standard it's perfectly acceptable there is there will not be a major difference between a nema standard or an iso standard for the same motor typically yes sir so the other question is from nero mehta how to yes. denoise vibration signal uh, what what do you mean i mean denoise uh, denoise what what do you mean by denoise i mean might be they mean like vibration produce noise how to reduce that noise denoise uh, d e n o i s e denoise no i i understand that but uh, i am not able to explain you know uh, what what to do, what to do mean by denoise so i I'm, i'm sorry i but you can send me a mail separately i'll try and get you an answer immediately on this yes sir okay we'll go with the next question which is being asked by pooja raj how air gap affects noise in motor uh, the air gap uh, noise measure, if the rotor movement is there due to imbalance or if the rotors are loose then the air gap changes and therefore then the induction motor noise level and this when you do a frequency analysis is brought out the air gap is also a measure of your shaft vibration so if you are looking at an orbit plot and the shaft changes then you can say that my vibration and therefore my noise level may change the air gap measurement is normally done from a vibration view point with a proximity probe and it is called uh, the graph that you would see and which i showed in my graph also is what is called an orbit plot yes sir we go to the next question sir someone is screaming please yeah this question is asked by kasim why is the iso acoustic assessment report used and that of far back as 1996 i mean this is 
okay this is just an example uh, there could be new standards for example both cpcb and dgca up update their standards regularly for the vibration levels so it is just a typical thing it was nothing to do with the year of the standard but uh, all standard organizations and measurement organizations keep in touch with whatever is the latest revision of the standard it's, so it could be that the standard only the year that i have mentioned is old it doesn't really matter uh, sir and the next question uh, next question yes so next question is what is the role of age gap with respect to noise and vibration i think i, I covered that just now yes sir we asked it again and yes as we said the air gap is would your you the air gap is the shaft vibration so that would indicate that your shaft movement is there that is indicated when you use a proximity probe and orbit plots so this is measured continuously in turbines to ensure that your shaft movement is not there around its axis and that will affect your vibration levels not really on the noise yes sir and the next question is from roshani parik what measures would would you take to control the vibration of a long conveyor belt or what material would you use around the belt to reduce its noise uh, again depending on the type of material that is carried on the belt and whether i could instead of doing on the belt i could put a noise curtain around the conveyor so that when the conveyor is going i don't as an operator hear the noise because if it is for example carrying iron ore or coal there will always be a noise on the belt i can't change that but from an operator view point i would i would prefer to put an a, a curtain between myself and the conveyor belts so that i get less noise there are some places that we you know you you can't do anything about the noise so for example in your house if you are using a mixer you will say okay if i am doing work please close the kitchen door because i i i, I can't hear with the mixer noise so in the same way yes so this question is from satya narayana yes and uh, is there any power station shut down due to the high vibration of all the uh, many many cases that you see in india also uh, uh, any vibration levels for example kpcl raichur is one of those best examples where in many cases turbine vibration was high and to prevent the turbine from getting badly damaged they had to shut down the whole power plant therefore for that reason a 24 bar 7 vibration monitoring system is installed in almost every large power plant in the country including say ntpc ramgundam or anywhere it's 24 bar 7 bar 365 it checks vibration levels of all the turbines generators it's part of what we would call the turbo supervisory system mm -hmm. it's it's always running because you you cannot have a power plant shut down right mm -hmm. so Uh, because it would have catastrophic downstream effect so these are measurements are done always to prevent the uh, prevent and then if there are three or four stages and you know one stage there is a vibration level then the generator uh, the electrical people and the mechanical people work together and say okay we'll shut down one section of the power plant and the other three will take care of the whole power it's a very very common incident in power plants of uh, uh, turbo supervisory system shutting down the turbine or generator or alternator if the vibration levels are high so this question is from uh, devadas do we have a vibration standard of transmission line uh, i am not sure uh, okay i don't have a particular number of the standard but cpri in bangalore or possibly in hyderabad cpri in bangalore definitely has a lab on transmission line testing and they would be able to give you the is standard for that these standard labs are certifying so exactly like what we saw yesterday on the 61850 compliance even for vibration levels uh, if you go to cpri and say that i want a transmission line measurement or a tower measurement they will tell you the standards for that it's available yes sir this is from a mobile what is the size of noise level for transformers well 
the transformers transformer rating defines the standard levels as i said you you could have a transformer from a few kilowatts to a few gigawatt and the ic60076 has standard levels for uh, noise level and measuring techniques both the standard defines this and this is from mr ravichandra what is the frequency of periodical calibration for vibration analysis meter and other measuring instruments uh, the typical standard as laid down by 10 i i ISO 10725 is one year. All instruments are calibrated for on an annual basis, and the reference by which they are calibrated also goes back to the calibration lab for periodic checking. The rule is one year. This is an international standard. Yes, sir. Shall I continue with the question, sir? I I I am I am most welcome because yes. I believe questions and answers help the. you know whole community yes there is a question from doctor uh, uh, what is the impact of material in vibration and noise i'm sorry what is the impact of material in vibration and noise what is uh, 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 doctor the question from doctor evc shekhar rao uh, impact Sh of material in could, could you clarify a little doctor shekhar what you mean because i am not clear hello hello sir uh, could dr shekhar if he is online clarify what he means yes sir uh, we'll give them a chance sir and next question this is from pujara jb yes. what are the reasons for noise and vibration in transformer again again noise and vibration on the transformer is an effect because of the winding problems if the, there is a continuous fluctuation and you can hear you can normally hear a humming noise when you go near a transformer now that's because of the continuous pulsations of the electrical signal now if if there is a problem in the windings that noise level changes also the vibration level on the outer portion of the transformer changes there is a standard for measuring it power grid for example uses vibration analyzers to check the vibration level of the transformer also periodically and this question is from ponderang shimpi what is the standard db level of induction motor compressor dg and generator i am asking for permission levels in industrial environment so he uh, wanted uh, to uh, again depending on the motor there is an iso or iec noise level specified a label is put on that and that is as per that particular motor rating it's fixed and yes. you can you can go to the iso standards or you could go to the manufacturer and say what is the noise level as per which standard have you measured the noise level and he'll give you the value so for each rotating machine in many cases iso or iec define these noise levels and as i said today even for a domestic watching machine that label has to be put for an earth mover that label has to be put because that is defined as per the standard so this question is from bima varupu amarendra how to identify emi presence at any application as i said i am not an emi rfi specialist so i would i'm sorry i will have to you know pass this question yes sir so the next question is from priyadarshi mitesh how can we differentiate electrical vibration and mechanical vibration in transformer and motor yes and this is something which i really brought out in my slide when you switch on a motor and you assume that there is both mechanical and electrically induced vibrations one of the things that you would do is look at whether uh, the gra uh, the vibration goes off when you switch off the electrical current if that goes off then it is electrically induced vibration uh, otherwise you look at the, uh, uh, then once you switch it off and you say okay now with if the vibration is power is gone by frequency analysis that signal has dropped then it is electrically induced vibration now you look at the mechanical uh, possibilities of the vibration look at the troubleshooting chart and say okay this could be the reason for the mechanical vibration electrically induced vibrations normally immediately go off when you switch off the power hello yes sir yes so i'll go with the next question sir yes uh, no problem how can we yes uh, yeah this is from manohar 
do the noise of electrical equipment affect the communication line do the noise of electrical equipment affect the communication line so he posted it again and again really are you talking of audio noise or emi rfi noise on your communication lines you are talking of more emi rfi noise so the audio noise and this operate in different frequencies the audio noise as you know operates between say 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz we are operating only in that segment emi rfi is in megahertz or gigahertz so it will normally not affect it. hello yes sir shall i go with the next question yeah, sir yeah, yes yes please yeah this question again from roshani parik so yes. how to obtain data sets which means database on the monitoring of mechanical vibrations and the electrical faults of a synchronous generator or motor well what happens is when you take uh, when you take a power plant you could create a baseline spectrum which means what was the vibration levels of all the rotating equipment when i started the plant and this is my baseline and then in your permanent vibration monitoring system as i showed you i am measuring the vibration levels continuously and that database is stored either in excel or sap or whichever and i am looking at the vibration levels continuously as you can see from the graph and say okay is the does the trend say that the vibration level is increasing i have a status indication which tells you if the vibration level is too high and that is your database management i could i could continuously store this uh, with software like osi soft and others onto a main database relate this with other process parameters and say yes my vibration my temperature pressure all are increasing so then is there a problem that is the way the database management is done yes sir so the question is from mr sachinarayana how can yes. we overcome the hunting effects in generators uh, okay I, i i'm sorry i would have to pass this because i am not a generator you know design effect i, I am on the instrumentation side so uh, this is a very specific question which uh, ideally someone from the generation station side would be able to answer there is another question sir yes from uh, bima or pa amarendra again yes. what is an impact of switching frequency on a sensor performance normally uh, frequent uh, many sensors are checked for emi rfi uh, you know susceptibility so for example when i showed you uh, the picture of a generator at the ntpc now because in a generator there is a very high emi rfi field on the sensor there is a data sheet which tells you how susceptible is this sensor to the emi rfi noise so we choose a sensor which has very low susceptibility to emi rfi noise when measuring generator vibration because it could be affected by the environment these are measurements done by the manufacturer of the sensor whether it is microphones whether it is accelerometers yes sir so that's all sir so with that we we almost ended with the questions which are being posted in the chat box yes, so no now problem. i ask all the participants uh, whoever are interested to uh, ask questions they can raise the hand so that we can unmute yourself so with we can unmute you and you can ask the questions or you can unmute yourself and ask the questions also no problem i will be very happy to answer any questions because as i said this topic is so very complex it is sometimes very very difficult to sh share anything on vibration in such a short time that is, that is why i said i'll take more questions because it is easier but i am very happy to take any questions which are there hello yes sir uh, sir we are waiting for the participants to yeah no problem. problem no no problem i can wait yeah a person has raised the hand yes yes leka chandran yes are you there you can ask the question leka no chandran problem. no problem i'll be very happy to take the questions 
Yes. No problem. If she is not there, but if there are any other questions, I could take that also. No problem. Anaga Suman. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this is Mrs. Somad. I'm calling from uh, Bharti Vidyapit College of Engineering, Pune. Um, uh, yes, madam. Yes. Uh, I, I, the session was really nice. Uh, I, I suppose few years ago, I had that impression in my mind that uh, this particular analysis, when I say noise or vibration, is something which is related to only mechanical people. But when I, uh, I recently submitted my PhD thesis, and uh, the uh, one of the part, uh, one of the testing part was the vibration analysis of my induction motor. So in that case, uh, as Sir said, uh, we use that proximity uh, one, I, I suppose, and uh, that vibration analysis was car carried out. Uh, I had to start with what is not drive end uh, uh, test test results, what is drive end results, and all. And uh, mm -hmm. it really feels uh, very uh, some sometimes uh, weird that. Uh, uh, many times we feel that this is not uh, belonging to electrical, but nowadays it is like interdisciplinary things. We have to uh, get uh, ourselves uh, updated as far as these things are concerned. And I suppose this session has uh, cleared many, many of the things as far as noise and vibration areas are concerned. Uh, Thank you very much, sir. Uh, one more thing is uh, if you uh, can share your contact details, as you said, we can arrange uh, the, the virtual uh, as as this session was carried out. We can uh, in these COVID days we can carry. Out, uh, I, I, I would be very happy to do it. In fact, yes. uh, I would yes. give an example that uh, today uh, uh, you have all these EVs coming out, electrical vehicles. Yes, sir. Correct. Now, there are at least uh, two presentations that I have, which is more than 100 slides, only on noise and measurement on EVs. Great. <laughs> so, you can, you, you can imagine, you know, the sort yes. of changing trends. You would normally, yes. normally think today that an EV doesn't make noise. Yeah. Right. But there are complex noises which come because you use switching circuits in an EV. So there is a lot of research going on in uh, noise and vibration even on an EV. Right. Uh, one of the best labs in Pune for noise and vibration would be ARAI, Automotive yes, Research sir. Institute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You you could you could meet one Mr. Sachin Jain there. No okay. problem. You Thank could you. give my you could give my reference there. Tell him that I told you. Definitely. And they, they will show you some of the best labs in noise and vibration in the country there. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think I shared my email ID with everyone. If not, you can have actually have a look. Uh, Amrita, you want to share it? or I think I have it in the last slide. Okay. We'll share the same. You can share my email ID and phone number. I am yes. available. I'm, uh, I have a lot of also contacts in this field from other labs like mm -hmm. as I uh, as telling your colleague in Pune, ARI is one of my oldest customers. So uh, I, if someone in Pune wants to go there, yeah, that's my email ID. Sir, before uh, participants ask the question, there were three more questions posted in the chat box, sir. I'll read it out. Welcome, sir. Yes. Sir. So it is from Mr. R. Ganesh. Uh, so he asked the question like, what are the current challenges arriving Measures NTPC power plant. Please explain, sir. Uh, I, I'm not. Uh, if you are there, can you ask, can you elaborate? Can you directly ask? So I think it was asking two questions combinedly. What are the current challenges arriving? Uh, I mean, uh, again, as uh, 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 from a instrumentation engineer, I'm not a power plant expert. But then there are the challenges in the power plant is maintenance. How do you ensure that? Your plant load factor is as high as possible. NTPC has, in fact, one of the best plant load factors in the country, I think more than 90%, because of all the techniques that they use for mechanical condition monitoring, electrical condition monitoring, everything. So these are, these are things that NTPC always looks at, your efficiency tracking, efficiency monitoring, all of them. Yes. But uh, but if you ask specifically what is NTPC challenges, then my suggestion is maybe you could look at someone in NTPC Ramgundam, you know, which is near your place to tell you actual, you know, scenario on a power plant. Sir, the next question is from Mr. Satyanarayana. Yes. How can we reduce the mal operation of the measuring instrument? 
uh, when you look at any operating instrument a look at the operation manuals as given by the manufacturer uh, right from the manuf- uh, you know handling of the sensors the microphones the accelerometers to the handling of the instrument observe those operating manual conditions and i think that any instrument and i have instruments today working in india for 30 40, 40 years if you operate as per the operating conditions it will work perfectly well this um, um, that's the only guideline that i can give that's the only guideline that i can give it's you know it's difficult to say uh what is the guidelines because it's just the operator whatever the manufacturer says it's like if i'm telling you do not keep the phone very near your gas stove yes that is because the phone gets heated so if you want it kept it very near your kitchen when you are cooking and this phone gets spoiled you can't say anything about to the manufacturer right or or if water falls on your phone and you use it there are electrical circuits inside the phone and you could have a short circuit yes the question is there sir another question is from mr ravindra gimonkar yes so he is asking uh, is it possible to generate electricity from vibration and if s yes, then how much vibrations are sufficient for generation of electricity well there are well this is an application which is now coming up using these mem sensors and others so a very simple application would be today in some of the malls uh, where people are walking up and down the steps there are small sensors which convert your foot walking into the enough power to uh, give the illumination on the steps it's like in a plane where you see the floor light floor lighting that's the minimum lighting that is required which is just a few milliwatt and this is used in some places but it has not yet got you know into a large scale but it is possible and it is implemented in a number of places i have seen a lot of papers available on this yeah that's all questions from the chat box sir yes uh, we we'll go with the participants participants can unmute themselves and they can ask questions yeah no problems believe me any of these topics that you take for example microphones or accelerometers itself is a two day three day training program uh, i have done program for engineering colleges where it runs to about 25 hours or 30 hours on noise and vibration for some of the top engineering colleges in the country with theory and practical also so if some anyone wants programs like that uh, we would be very happy to do it all on a regular basis uh, this is taught noise and vibration in india is really taught only in the iics and iits really on an extensive level uh, and is taught only at the say aerospace or mechanical engineering neelima you can ask the question because you raised the hand yes is the participants are welcome to ask the questions and the feedback form link has been uh, uh, posted in the chat box so please do fill it Yes, please. I, 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 I am actually ready. But if there is anything particular, I am always ready. The email address is given. Amrita has my email address. She has my phone number. You could always message me or WhatsApp me. Also, I'd be very happy to. Yes. Sir. Well, I request uh, Mr. Sudhir Kumar, Assistant Professor from Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, to convey the vote of thanks. Good evening, all. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Rajshekar Uchil, sir, for the wonderful presentation and is more informative, sir. and thank you so much for spending your valuable time to share your knowledge with us on noise and vibration in power plants and in electrical engineering especially and we came to know about the research on noise and vibration is going on right now because of you and thank you for that and uh, thank you for providing a good information from you and thank you all participants for your patience listening and i thank management principal and hod triple a for arranging such a session 
to enlighten our knowledge on industrial exposure. Thank you all once again. Please fill the feedback form posted in the chat box. Thank you. As I said, I've given my email address and phone number. Uh, participants or organizers can always get back to me if there is anything else also required later on. Thank you. Thank you very much again. Sir, uh, uh, there are a few more questions being posted in the yeah. chat box, sir. Yes, yes, welcome. Let's uh, take Omar, it. Omar Rahman has posted, what yes. are the measures taken for noise reduction in electrical machines is the first question. Yes. The second question is, what are some softwares used for noise measurement? Uh, uh, most of the measures taken for noise reduction is a separate topic. But if you could just send me your email, I could send you some examples of that. Uh, the softwares used for noise measurement is normally you use a sound dial meter directly. Uh, uh, if you are talking of analysis of the electrical uh, machine, then there is software from companies like Mantises, which do virtual simulation like Nastran or ANSYS. If you are talking of measurements, then you have a microphone and a sound dial meter for physical measurements. Yes, sir. So there is also another question from Mr. Kasim. Uh, why the use of ISO acoustic assessment report and that of, yeah, this you answered it, but they posted it again, sir. Yes. Is there any applicability different or specific to certain places? Uh, I mean, the environmental impact assessment is a standard qualification report done to, to set up any industry. So whether you set up the metro or you set up a power plant or you set up a chemical industry, the, the EIA report has to be set up. So depending on what you are doing, the Pollution Control Board defines what are the reports that has to be mentioned. So for example, if it is something, let's say it's electronic industry, which is not noise inducing, then you may not be asked to give a noise report. If it's an airport, then definitely because there's lots of noise when aeroplanes land and take off, then an EIA report will be asked by the pollution control authorities. This depends on the factory, for example, that you are taking up. The Metro, for example, uh, we have supplied software to Larson and Tubro and others to do this imp uh, environmental impact assessment before the Metro came up in both Hyderabad and Chennai. Sir, there is another question from T. Muthukumaran. Any idea on testing facility for IR thermometer? Infrared thermometers, there are a large number of companies which do calibration. I would say that ETDC could be an organization which does the calibration. There are private labs. I know Toshniwal, I know Nagman. All these companies also do calibration of the infrared, in, uh, infrared parameters. You normally have to use a calibrated black body to do the calibration. Yes, that's all, sir. They were asking some publication papers on this work. I mean, uh, publication papers, uh, if you can share my ID and you can say that you, if you tell me a specific topic, because believe me, for example, the ISO standards that I showed you are a hundreds. So if you tell me a particular topic, I would be very happy. If I have a paper or an example or a presentation, I'd be happy to share. But the generic thing is, it's so huge an area. And believe me, uh, the companies from where I've taken this have been working for 75 years only on noise and vibration. So it's almost impossible to say, share me a paper unless you tell me a very specific you know, domain. Then I can try if I, if I have a paper, I'll be very happy. If it, and if it is in the public domain, I'll be very happy to share it. No issue. Yes, they were asking in specific like power vibration paper, sir. Yeah, I mean, th those are available. No problem. If you send me a paper, I can try and see if I have some examples on power plant vibrations, power plant noise, everything. If you could either collate or they can come back to me through you also, I'd be very happy to individually support them. No, sir, in the chat box. So, yeah, I think Amrita has given my email also to everyone. So you can get back to me. Box, yes, yes, I saw that. It's, it's Yura Shekhar at hotmail, hotmail at gmail.com or Yura Shekhar at hotmail.com. Both the, these things, my phone number is also there. Amrita has my number, so you can put the number on the uh, It's a WhatsApp number also. People are welcome to WhatsApp me. You may not get a reply 
uh, if I am busy, but I will try and give you a reply anytime. Okay. I uh, uh, I would say that uh, any feedback on how the session was, I would be very happy to hear it, so that I could no, I could no, also you know do any any I corrections know. that I could do. Yes, how the measuring accuracy, Mr. Ravi Chandran, how the measuring accuracy will vary based on the temperature conditions, right, Mr. Ravi Chandran? So yes, Amrita, I, I, any other questions or any other assistance that your college requires? <coughs> I'll be very happy to provide. Put the RAM or a Yes, Mr. Ravichandran. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, sir. You had asked for some questions yeah. and how how the measuring accuracy will measure now. Uh, the measuring accuracies are defined on a standard by the temperature in which it is taken. For example, in a calibration lab, you are supposed to measure, do all measurements at say 23 degrees and standard pressure and temperature. Uh, if you are doing a measurement outside, then you have to look at the sensor characteristics, which will tell you how much the sensor is going to be affected by ambient conditions. So as I said, there is a temperature sensitivity for an accelerometer. There is a EMI RFI sensitivity for an accelerometer, you relate that to the conditions and it will tell you what could be the accuracies of the entire measurement system. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Patiently, we are answering all the questions and we will contact you regarding the industry connect, sir, future. No problem. No problem. If there is any assistance that you want from me or from my organization from isa also if you want yes. any sort of industry connect on anything on instrumentation yes. sensors so temperature pressure flow power plant measurements diagnostics there's so much you could always help i would also look at i would also welcome all of you to look at this organization which is isa.org it's a global organization many of you may be members of IEEE. So this is a similar organization, yes, but sir. on automation. Okay. Uh, sir, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yes. I am Ravichandra here again. I yes. lost the net connection. So unfortunately, I didn't uh, uh, focus on your uh, answer of against my question. Okay. So when you talk of measuring, <laughs> when you talk of measuring yes, accuracy, so let's look at an accelerometer. Now, in an accelerometer calibration chart, it will tell you what is the drift of the accelerometer with relation to the ambience in terms of temperature, in terms of EMI, RFI, everything. So an accelerometer which is designed to operate from say minus uh, say 25 degrees to 120 degrees will not have any change in accuracies within these temperature conditions. If there is an EMI, RFI interference, details given on the accelerometer, again, that is, you know what is the accuracy, what is the effect of that on the accelerometer accuracy. And your final accuracies is a what we call as chain accuracy, which means that the sensor, conditioner, analyzer, everything. Your complete data acquisition system analyzer accuracy can be given by the manufacturer or can be checked on the field. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sorry. If it is okay, then we can, you know, close it. But I, 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 I will leave whenever you people say that it is good enough to close. Sure. <laughs> Participants, if any questions are there, you can ask. Otherwise, we will close the session. So, okay, sir, then thank you. Sir. I, I hope that I, it, the presentation and the discussions were satisfactory.
to yes, both the organize, organizers and the participants. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for uh, joining with us today. It is my pleasure, madam. And as as I said, if there is anything that I have not covered or you, where you felt that you know details were not enough because of the paucity of time, you could always email me. Uh, you we could have a separate session any time else also. No problem. Sure, sir. We'll be in touch with you, sir. Sure. Yes, yes. Right, sir. Then thank you very much for the session. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.